the president and the members of the Rotary Club. Thank you for renewing my membership, which I have forgotten. <laughs> Not that anyone renews my membership anymore these days. <laughs> When uh, Pradeep spoke to me and asked me, invited me to come here, I said yes. Then yesterday only I remembered that I didn't know what I was going to speak on. So I asked Pradeep what I'm going to speak on, on the crisis. So I said, which crisis? <laughs> there are so many who can't find one here, but invent one, he said. But at the moment, there are no need to invent any crisis because there's one that we are facing and that's basically leading, which we haven't done earlier, the unraveling of our economy, the unraveling of our social system, and most probably the unraveling of our uh, political system. Economically, we have not seen such a situation since 1988-89, when we had the LTT on one hand, the JVP on the other hand, we had the uh, IPEKF, and the economy really took a bashing. But that is nothing compared to what we are going through today. What are we faced with firstly? There is a decline in our foreign exchange reserves. I need to tell you how much it is. We just have a month, sometimes less. Our overall situation is bad because we don't have, the banks don't carry their own reserves because in 2019 when we left, though we had 7 billion in reserve, there were another 3 billion lying in the banks and other accounts in the exporters' accounts. Secondly, there is a declining government revenue. In 2019, the government revenue was 1.8 trillion. In 2020, uh, it was 1.3 trillion. And from January to September this last year, it was 1 trillion. So just can imagine what the uh, revenue gap is. And the total debt has risen. By 2020, we had hit 101% of our GDP. This has never happened before. We've always tried to keep it at 85% and then try and bring it down, sometimes even in the 70s. Our foreign exchange uh, debt is about 66% of it. Then we have the foreign exchange payments, foreign reserves, we have to make our payments. Uh, we have to pay about $6 billion a year for the next five years. So this is the foreign exchange situation we are facing. Then, in the short, due to the shortage of uh, revenue, we have resorted to money printing. One factory that I installed in Biagami now keeping all of you running, <laughs> Thomas Dilaru. <laughs> and uh, between uh, by 20 uh, in 2020 in 2020, the money increase was 23 percent. If you take 2019 as the base. So what have we got? You have money being printed on one side and a decline of foreign exchange and as a result is uh, the dollar which was 181 in 2019 November is now, you should know today, I don't know, it, someone said 240 but it's now coming close to 250. And we are having a number of uh, foreign exchange transactions, either the government rate or the bank rate or the PETA rate, and then what are the undi and the hawali things you mean. So that, 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 that is the basically the situation we have. So what, what are we having, what is the result? As the economy contracts that fast, the impact is being felt by the working class, the lower income people, the samurdhi and others. They are feeling it badly. I think it will come to a time before end of the year when one meal will have to be skipped. We are also finding uh, the middle class, part of the middle class is slipping down, back. They are going out of the middle class into the uh, lower income category. That is the second issue. Then unemployment and inflation are on the rise. And the other one is that there is going to be a shortage of food, shortage of food production by March. And the other contrast to this, that there are still enterprises which make super profits, which, which leads to social tension. So how do we resolve this? Some people feel 
that this will be resolved when the global economy recovers from COVID-19. In the early occasions, when we had problems, we hit the rock bottom in 77 or 89 or 2001 or needed help in 215, the global economy was doing well. So we could always go to them and get some spare cash in some way or other. We went along to the IMF. The IMF provided us with the funding, but there were always allies around. To ensure that every country was our friend. But this time it's different. According to the IMF, the first quarter of 2022, there will be a slowing down of growth. That is due to Omicron. But they say thereafter, because the US and China are slowing down, the rate of growth globally will slow down. If you look at the advanced economies, for 2021 the growth was 5%, for 2022 it is 3.9, for 2023 it's 2.6. For China it was 8.1 in 2021, 4.8 in 2022 and 5.3 in 2023. For emerging markets and low middle income countries like us, and this is, I am quoting what is the further top uh, country, not to us, who are at the bottom, is still be, uh, 2021 was 6.8, 2022 is 4.8, and 2023 is going to be 4.6. And the global economy has lost up to 13 trillion dollars, uh, we lose up to 13 trillion dollars by 2024. And the global debt, that is the official debt, government debt, the private sector debt, and the household debt is 256% of the global GDP. So this is what we will face in the next two years. The other short term issue is Omicron. In advanced countries and China, over 70% of the people have received two vaccines and nearly 50 plus, 50 percent plus, coming to 60 percent, a booster. In Sri Lanka, 60 percent has coverage for the two vaccines and 25 percent the booster. So you can understand when the health authorities say the hospitals are filling up. They are filling up. And it will be such a strain that they may not be able to uh, actually treat other illnesses. This is what happened in UK. Germany and Western Europe during uh, the winter. So in addition to these issues that we face, how do we come out of it, there are other long term issues. You know, we have no money to pay the government pensions. When we were in government, we calculated it as being somewhere by 2032-2035. I think now we will run out of that money much earlier. If we can hold on till 20. 2030, it's all right. Otherwise, the problem. So people like me will not get my pension. The other is climate change. Now, climate change is making you need a fair amount of money to fight climate change. For instance, I think uh, they have done a study where from Mumbai downwards to our west coast, there will be the water will rise by about three feet. That is one instance. Then the drought, the floods. Where is the money? Already the world is short of money. So where are we going to find the money? Otherwise, those who are there by 2040 may find that this is about two feet underwater. You know, comfort. Yeah. So these, these are the problems. I am not talking about the money we require for modernizing education, for running the health system. Uh, where do we find the money in the future? Because we can, let's say the first step is stabilizing the economy. How do you hold it? How do you find the foreign exchange? But that alone is not enough. Then how do you handle that decline in government revenue? How do you bring financial discipline? This is the first part. Many I have suggested and many others have suggested go to the IMF. IMF, it will be difficult in this situation. Many countries have had to tighten their bills. But otherwise, the IMF, I know in 77 when we went there, we got enough money and we opened up the economy. They also encouraged us to give the textbooks free. I went and negotiated the assistance for Janasavir. 
his industrialization program. In 2001, when I went to IMF, we got the support, we turned the economy around in one year. In 2015, we had come up and we had a uh, surplus on the primary budget, which had carried through, we would have results. So, you know, that's what I say. But if the government says they are not going to the IMF, they must come up with a viable option. There are no homegrown options. What I call there are no button options. <laughs> it must have a full this. And that is needed. If the government doesn't come up, I think I will ask for, and others will ask, for a statement by the minister in parliament as to what are you going to do. Are you going to the IMF? If you are not, tell us what your options are. The country has a right to know. You can't hide things from parliament. You read in the newspapers one step, and from the another day you find something contradictory. So that is what we have to do. Then we must look at our long-term issues. We have a balance of payment issues. Now we can't put that right in 24 hours. It will take us. We have to find new, new sources of... Uh, Foreign exchange will take you 10 15 years. When President Jayawardena started uh, Mahavali, he started it in 78. We finalized the final uh, irrigation works were opened in 90, I think, or 91. But it was 2003 when we became self sufficient in rice. So, like that, there is a registration period. Now, where, where do you do? How do you manage until that? That's one of the issues that we have. Then, where, where, where are we going to find our foreign exchange? What's going to be exports? We can't have uh, apparel only. We have to compete with uh, Bangladesh. That one sector we are good in. What do you do with tea? We have to think anew. Are we going for semi-automation? Are we going to become a logistics center? Are we going into AI? which means training people. If you say we want to go into IT, I will say you can't do it now. You have got the people. As you know, you've got two investors who come in, large investors. So they are uh, recruiting uh, personnel. As a result, the smaller guys have run short of IT personnel. So you've got to train them. Remember, these are long term. There are no magic wand. Uh, we have to uh, look at the environment. How do we modernize? How do we join the fifth industrial revolution? So these are all to do with medium and long term economic development. You can't just come and say I will stabilize the economy. No, you must have a, uh, you must have a plan. And what do you think of our country which was next to Japan? In 1949, when I was born, we are down to Afghanistan. Still, we should by 2050 ensure that our GDP increases at least fivefold or sixfold. It's a massive effort, but it, it can be done. But for this, I will tell you, there are no, no short term fixes. No one is going to turn up and say we are going to help Sri Lanka. I mean, we, we have a we should go into the Guinness Book of Records. The only country in the world that has antagonized US, Europe, India, Japan and China. No one else has done that. So it's going to be a long way getting hold of them. You don't realize the problems that we've had on this fertilizer deal. It has broken the confidence of the Chinese investors. It's going to take you time to repair it. Everyone says there will be Chinese investors coming. No because we've broken their confidence. We signed an agreement which said if there's a dispute, it should be sent to arbitration, and then we didn't do that. It's gone down all the Chinese companies. India is looking at the same. We were promised two LNG plants. It has not come in. Japanese say we were promised an LRT, it has come in. So where, where do you win confidence? So this is what we have to do. There's no magic wand. I don't think we can do it the way we do now our politics. We've gone on personalities, we've gone on sound bites. <laughs> we are all there to save the country, Rata Jati Beragan. As a result, Ardike Nathiela. That is all that has happened. 
So we, we have to realize anyone who says I can do it, I'll do it in one term, is talking wrong. What do you need? The country, the political system, the business system, all should understand that we should agree on a broad economic framework which will last for 15 to 20 years. Then governments come and governments go, it doesn't matter. I mean, very few prime ministers in Japan have lasted more than two years. It's called the revolving door government. Because when one goes, in the other comes out. But look at its uh, development. I think except for Nakasone and Abe and two or three others, no one else has done that. Look at the development that takes place. Why is why did uh, why have the European governments developed? Because the basic economic framework is not touched unless there's a consensus. So Margaret Thatcher started a revolution in 1980. It went in the 1990s before most of Europe accepted it. So let us now work on what do we need. First decide where are we going, what are our objectives. What do you want to be in 2050? I would say what do you want to be in 2048? They are planned for 2049. The centenary of the uh, creation of the People's Republic of China. The report is called Rejuvenation of the Chinese Nation. Singapore worked it out. So then we should be prepared. Is the test for everyone, for politicians and others. How do we get together? And how do we come up, come up with a national framework? Within it, you can contest. If someone says, I'll do better than you. Someone succeeds, they'll get a second chance. If they fail, someone else will come in. But the policies don't change. You see the drama that goes on in Tamil Nadu. One group comes, locks the other groups up, they do something else. But Tamil Nadu, is one of the fastest growing states in India. Whatever they do in politics or hit each other, they will not touch the economy. And the economy is the only thing. So we have to learn that there are no short term fixers, there are no slogans, we can't have film stars. Uh, no, the country must have solid policies and people who can implement it, not merely at the top of the government, but those who are committed to in the private sector and the government sector. Other words, this is a chance we have to modernize. We don't get another chance again. We got one in 77. But that economy, that world is over. I wouldn't say that we can go ahead with what we did in 1977. We have to now think of 2048 and go ahead. So let us, that is the only formula or the solution or the recipe I can give you. If you want the meal, everyone has to cook it together. It is going to be buddhiyani or not, I don't know, but it has something to eat. Thank you.